Hey, hey, it's a new day and welcome back to my channel. So I was gonna start this video off with a bunch of cute, pretty clips, you know, combing my hair, making a coffee, snuggling up with my blanket. It is not one of those mornings. We'll get some cozy moments in this video, just hang on. But this morning, it's a Friday morning and I have been up and at it. I'm eating a Dave's Deli um, everything bagel with chive and herb cream cheese. Very, very good. But anyway, this morning I'm gathering all my stuff together. We have a very full weekend, but it should be really relaxing too. So I was excited to take you guys along on it. First of all, this morning I'm going with my mom and sisters to help set up for my sister's bridal shower. So I wanna take you all along on that. And then we're going to the cabin this weekend. So I'll take you guys along for some of that. I'm in charge of a breakfast. So we'll be doing dry beef gravy and all the stuff for that. I'm also gonna be trying to make iced coffee for a crowd. So we'll see how that goes down, stay tuned. And then when we get back, I'll take you along to the bridal shower. So yeah, it's gonna be a really fun and full weekend and I'm glad you guys are here. So I'm actually standing here in my office. I am actually in the bridal party, so I was in charge of games, but my mom is doing decorations and she wanted a few things. So this is a cast iron Dutch oven that I have. She wants to put soup in, we're doing, like a, you'll see, a soup and bread bar type of thing. Um, and then my drink dispenser and my smaller drink dispenser. I don't know if she actually needs that one. And then here is my game. I need to still put it in like a prettier box. But it's going to be where they try to guess. My sister, first of all, she's 20. She has no idea what the price of things really is. Um, I mean, maybe she does. We'll see how good she does. But I made up this little printable on Canva. And there's 14 items in this box here. And everybody, including my sister, is going to guess what they cost at Target um, to the nearest dollar. And then we're going to see who can get the closest by subtracting, you know, the actual cost from what you guessed. And whoever is the closest overall um, is the winner. But guys, prices are crazy. I don't even think I could do very well with this because these uh, mason jars are 12 of them for 10 bucks. And then this gift bag was like $5.99. Like that's crazy. <laughs> so yeah, it'll be interesting to see how well she does. Yesterday, I went down to the neighbors and I was clipping magnolia leaves from their huge magnolia bush tree, whatever. Um, and so we're gonna scatter those throughout. I just love the backside of magnolia leaves, like that coppery color, it's so pretty. And that's actually one of her wedding colors. So. I'm really excited to see how that will all turn out this morning. Also, I was gonna surprise her with a little gift and it hasn't arrived yet. It might arrive still in time. This is Friday yet and the bridal shower is Sunday. So it still might arrive in time, but I found a company called Paint Your Life where you actually just send in a photo and they will actually have a real artist paint it. You can pick the medium you want, like acrylic, watercolor, whatever. And so I chose an artist that I loved her style and I sent them a picture and they made up a gorgeous, gorgeous picture for her. So I'm hoping to use it as decor at the bridal shower, but if not, she can always use it as decor at her wedding. My sister did a graphite drawing of me and my husband um, that we had at our wedding. And so, I don't know, it's just like a nice little personal touch. And this painting is so dreamy. But what's really cool about Paint Your Life is that you don't actually have to have a specific picture that's exactly how you want it. You can actually take pictures of all your family from throughout the country or something and have them combined into one composite painting or maybe somebody's past and you want like a memory photo. Um, and yeah, you can. there's so many different ways you can use paint in your life and you're actually paying real artists to do what they do best. Okay, so the painting is here. My sister is about to walk through the door. She's helping me out today and I cannot wait to get her reaction. I'm kind of nervous. <gasps> oh my word! Did you paint it? No, no. What the world? That's so cool. Do you like it? Yes, I love it. Who painted it? I got it from Paint Your Life. Oh my word, that's so cool. Do you like colors? Yeah. I didn't I'm know which picture to use. Room. I didn't know which picture to use, but I was like, okay, which picture would I want to decorate with more? And when you do something like this, there's always like a little bit of nervousness, but there's actually no risk because if you don't love your painting, um, you can get it returned. Actually, there was one little edit I had her make. I kind of wanted the middle between the two of them more blurred out, and so I said, hey, can you fix that? And Boom, done, it was that easy. I also think it could be really cool if you wanted to get like a painting of like the family farm or something like that and have your like the family standing out in the yard kind of small or I don't know, there's so many ways you can do it and I'm all about giving artists an avenue to like make money through their talent. So I think this is just a really, really cool website you guys should check out. Check out Paint Your Life in the link below and you can use my code for 20% off of your order. So not only am I gathering everything together for the bridal shower, but I'm also packing for the cabin at the moment. Oh man, I need to fill up these ice chests and yeah, just we did a lot of the packing last night, but there's still a lot left to do, so it's gonna be a busy morning.
Okay, long story short, we are not going to the cabin. Um, I'm actually sitting here on the bed with my sick baby in the emergency room. But yeah, it is definitely scary. Um, his oxygen levels were at like 85, they thought, at the doctor. And they're like, oh, gotta take him in, you gotta get x-rays, gotta get blood work done, go into the ER. Um, but they were trying to take his blood pressure, I mean, his, his oxygen, which was, um, he was thrashing around, he hated it. They tried it three different times because the machine kept saying error. And so then they got, used the adult one and we had to like hold him down, it was horrible. But yeah, so they said 85, which they're like, that's way concerning, so get to the hospital. But we got here and it was 98%. So, I mean, he was also really worked up at the doctor. Would that have made his blood pressure? I mean, his, I keep saying blood pressure. <sighs> I, I'm not thinking straight clearly. I'll check back in with you once it's all said and done. Like, hopefully this has a happy ending and we can move on with our weekend and our little one-year-old will be happy, chipper, energetic self again. So yeah, Ivani is, I'm sure, very confused. She thought she was gonna get picked up from school and go to the cabin, but they're gonna go to the grandma's house and I'm hoping we can be out of here and not have to stay the night or anything. They gave him a COVID test. Well, it was COVID slash RSV slash flu, pneumonia, everything. Um, and gave him Tylenol. And now we are gonna wait for like an hour to get the test back, the results. Um, he seems very much more energetic, I would say, but that's probably the Tylenol. I don't know, Josh is just holding him. And I don't know, I, I think I'm gonna do something that makes me feel normal. I'm gonna like, make a reel and save it to my drafts or something. I don't know, <laughs> I need to do something. Good morning. As you can tell, we're not at the cabin. As planned, which it's hard to feel super depressed about, when your child is on the mend. Nothing like a sick baby to put everything in perspective, right? Um, but yeah, I'm just making myself a green juice this morning because I feel like we need all the health in our lives at the moment. She says that she dumps grapefruit seltzer water in her green juice. So I'm actually gonna top it with some grapefruit juice just because I have it and I wanna use it up. And I like sour stuff. There we go. That's good. <laughs> Josh is always like flipping out when he sees me drinking green juice, but this green goodness stuff is actually really good from Bolt House. I buy green juice like every three months. But anyway, I need to give you guys a little update. Okay, first of all, I never post on Instagram when we're sick. I mean, we get sick like normal families do once in a while. You know, I feel like for the overall most part with three little children, we're pretty healthy actually. Um, but yeah, I never post anything on Instagram because then when you're sick, I don't need to hear all the things I might have or things I, that could go wrong or things I shouldn't do because I'm sick. And anyway, so I don't even, I don't even bring it up, but this video is going up like a week and a half after the fact. So I didn't know if I should just stop filming for the weekend, but at the same time, it's real mom, mom life. I feel like it's too much real mom life with sick children, especially little ones. And I have a kindergartner. I feel like she's probably going to bring a lot of stuff home this winter. We're pumping that elderberry syrup and just, yeah, trying to eat healthy food and make sure they get their veggies and things like that. But honestly, yeah, health is all that really matters. Um, everything else shuts down if you're not healthy. So um, anyway, last night we were at the ER. The whole thing from when I took him to his doctor appointment until we got out of the ER was about four hours. Basically, I had this whole thing hanging over my head that, oh my goodness, it's the weekend coming up and my doctor's office isn't gonna have hours. And then what am I gonna do? I'd rather take him to a doctor appointment now and get on top of it so that if it's his cold is getting worse on Saturday, then I don't have to go to the ER. I was like, I'll do anything to stay out of the ER. Like I thought that's the worst possible place to be. Um, I would never have been to the ER and yeah, I was just like, we gotta stay out of the ER. Little did I know if I went to my family doctor, it was just a fast track to the ER. My family doctor is not a pediatrician. Um, so that's problem one right there, but my kids were mostly healthy, so it's never been a problem. But they wanted to take his oxygen levels and he hated it. They tried to wrap it around his toe and he just kicked and flailed. And first, I kid you not, three times the nurse tried to get his oxygen reading with the kids one that like tapes around his toe and her computer kept giving error code, error code, like it wouldn't even measure anything. So we have no idea. 
So of course he is screaming bloody murder. His oxygen I'm sure is low because he can't even breathe because he's crying so hard. At that point I was starting to feel a little bit of hope because I'm like, if he has this much feist in him, like he must not be that sick. Um, but then the actual doctor came in and he used the adult one and we held him down, literally held him down as he screamed and kicked. It was horrible. It's, it's awful. Anyway, I hated it so bad, but we got a reading hardly, not really. He like was thrashing around and guess what? The reading was 85, which he said anything under 95 is a little bit concerning and anything under 90 is very concerning. So he's like, we're gonna have to go to the ER. And I was like, are you kidding me? Oh my goodness. I was at that point. I was worried, but I was also like, how is that number even halfway accurate? Like we were wrestling an alligator here. <laughs> um, but yeah, I actually managed to keep it together somewhat, which is not me. I'm very um, stressed out. Like I get very worked up about things like that. And like, like I said, I was like dreading. I was like anything to keep him out of the ER. Like I don't want to do that. And at this point he was acting, you know, he had just cried and cried. So he was like wiped out. And I put him in his little car seat and started packing up stuff and put him in his car seat and headed 20 minutes to the ER and he fell asleep, which was great. He needed that little nap. He woke up and he was so different. But here is the problem that I did that I feel so dumb about. And I'm sure none of you will ever do. So you can just laugh at my horrible mom skills here. Poor Miller has to, yeah, you'd think by the third kid, I'd know what's going on. But I did not give him Tylenol before I went to the doctor because I wanted them to see. I was afraid I was gonna go to the doctor and they were gonna be like, he has a cold. Cause that's kind of what I knew. He has a cold, but he sounds terrible. And he was like lethargic. And I just was nervous. Like I said, the whole weekend was hanging over me. So I did not give him Tylenol and I should have because as soon as we got to the ER, they gave him some Tylenol. He like perked up and he was like playing with Josh. He loved it. He was like, loved being the center of attention. And But my whole thought process was if I give him Tylenol, then the doctor's gonna think, oh, he looks completely fine and perky. The, the doctor at the ER was super helpful. Like I told him he needs to teach a class to new moms about when and when not to get worried and concerned and like all the different stuff because he was so helpful the home remedies everything the thought processes i don't know i really like the guy i don't even know his name but he was just what i needed very matter of fact but like yeah he took all the time in the world to talk to us while he was charting and things like that so anyway he said always do the tylenol he's like that's fine if you tell your doctor that you took their temperature at home and it was 101 but now it's fine because he has Tylenol in him. They're gonna believe you, he said. So don't worry about that. So any new moms out there, if you believe in Tylenol, if you don't, that's fine. Do your natural stuff, whatever. But um, yeah, I'm not above the Tylenol in desperate situation. That's the other thing too. I think for myself, I rarely ever medicate myself. I'd rather just like rest and be miserable and hope it passes because I hate feeling medicated. So I'm not very quick to give myself Tylenol or anything either. I feel like my body should have a chance to work through it. But yeah, this poor little baby, after he gave him Tylenol, it was just so exciting to see him totally change his personality. His fever came down. They did a nose swab, which was so sad. They like literally went up to his brain. He didn't trust anybody after that. Um, but he didn't have COVID, he didn't have RSV, and he didn't have the flu. And his lungs looked good and his chest looked good because they did a little x-ray, um, which I thought was a little bit overkill, but whatever. We were there, might as well figure it out. Anyway, they diagnosed him with general bronchiolitis, basically a cold, and he's a little guy, so like the space between all the stuff is very small. And it's just, he, they said, you know, your bigger kids had this exact same thing two weeks ago. I'm like, yep. He's like, yeah, it just doesn't sound, it sound as bad in little kids. The older they get, the better it is. So I was just praising God he wasn't like three months old. Um, he was a year old, and I feel like one-year-olds can give you so many more cues if they're not feeling good, even though they can't talk. They, there's just so many more things you can observe like their differences in behavior, their eyes looking droopy, like stuff like that, that you can go off of. So I was praising God that he was one and not three or six months old or something like that. Um, but yeah, after we got in the hospital and we waited around for the test for like an hour, scary fact, oh my word, but it was also really fun too. Our friends were in the ER at the same time. She was having some like complications with her pregnancy and um, they were right across the hall, so we talk, talked with them a little bit, which was not, it, I was like, is it a good thing to run into your friends at the ER? One, it felt good. It felt like a, like a break, like a mental, like rejuvenation or something, but you don't want to run into your friends in the ER. Like neither of us wanted to be there. Thank you very much. But yeah, thankfully we were all generally okay and we could go home. Um, but yeah, so they gave him a steroid just to help him get on top of it. And we went home and he was fine all evening. His Tylenol was wonderful. Like I was feeling so bad about, like I like to be natural, but sometimes, see, I don't even want to put this out there because now you're all going to be in the comments saying, she's the devil, she used Tylenol. And other people are going to be like, you're so neglectful. You should have gave her, him Tylenol so long ago. I know, I know, I get it. For myself, I do regret not giving him some Tylenol, some baby infant Tylenol, the proper dosage. 
Um, I would do that next time if it happened, but I had that whole weekend thing hanging over my head and now I know what an ER is and yes, it's very expensive. I had to do a $200 copay because I'm self pay. Plus then there's gonna be more bills after that for all the other things. So thankfully we have Christian healthcare so I can turn some of that stuff in. But anyway, there's all the gory details. He's perfectly fine this morning. I mean, he still has like a creepy kind of cough when he coughs once in a while, but he's not coughing a ton and he's very chipper and happy. Anyway, so the kids are up and Josh is with them. I'm gonna make sausage gravy and biscuits and then head out the door to do a bunch of errand running and things like that. Might take the big kids with me. They're 100% fine. There's not even, they don't even have snotty noses anymore. So we might go play at a park since it's 70 degrees today in November. I don't know what we did to deserve this. It's wonderful. Um, maybe have Miller sit out in the sun for a little bit, you know, fresh air, that kind of thing. Um, but I'm not, not taking him along. Josh will stay home with him while he takes his nap and I'll do my errand running. And then Josh is going to go golfing this afternoon, I think. I mean, how can you not be outside when it's 70 degrees in November, right? But yeah, Sunday, hopefully Lord willing, will look like a normal, we'll go to the bridal shower, all that stuff. So yeah, let's get to making our breakfast. So the way I make sausage gravy is I just put the sausage right into the pan and I brown it up. And then when it's starting to look pretty much done, I will sprinkle, you can sprinkle flour over top, but what I like to do is use a package of country gravy mix. The peppered gravy mix is also really good, but I'll just sprinkle that on and then kind of let the grease and everything soak it up. I don't usually actually drain my, drain my sausage when I make sausage gravy, but that's totally up to you. And I'll just usually like fry it up until the gravy mix just looks like it's part of the meat. It's not white anymore. And then I'll just add my milk and let it simmer for a while while I try to tidy up my kitchen and all that kind of thing. And while it's simmering and getting all nice and thick and creamy, I will put biscuits in the oven. I do have a homemade biscuit recipe that I love to make, but yeah, I had all these leftover biscuits that we were supposed to take to the cabin. So I just popped them in the oven and super easy, super quick. And everybody loves this breakfast. She set it up. Wow, Bonnie, how much does everything cost? I want it all. Yes, you may do that title out Okay, we are on our errand running now. I have the two big kids with me. First stop is Twin Valley Coffee. It's just like a little walk-up window, um, but there's a, two of my favorite places in Lancaster County to get coffees, Latte Love and Twin Valley. Of course, there's a guy right beside me trying to get out of his truck. <laughs> okay. But yeah, do you guys get sick of me talking about Lancaster County recommendations and stuff? It's just like, I know some of you do travel to this area, a very small amount of you, I'm sure. People like to complain about Lancaster County, the people that live here, but I love it. I just love the pace, there's like things to do, the weather is amazing, we don't have to worry about earthquakes and hurricanes and tornadoes too much. Um, so I don't know, I just love this area and I like the hustle and bustle. I am definitely a Lancaster Countyan, but I know there are some of you that live here that do not like it and I'm sorry for you. I hope you can get out. <laughs> you know, Lancaster County is, is pretty populated, but I, I don't know. I just wish you could all come and visit, especially in the summer or fall. But yeah, if you do happen to plan a trip to Lancaster County, I have an entire playlist of different recommendations and things you can do. You can kind of visit virtually through me. Okay. I hear a Mennonite pulls up beside me. Yes, I'm talking to my camera. Hi, <laughs> let's go in. Okay, so I got a large nitro cold brew with sweet cream and light caramel drizzle. I'm not a caramel drizzly person, but it's so pretty you can't really skip it. <laughs> anyway. Love their logo, let's have a taste. Yum, this is so good. I've pretty much given up on ordering coffees at coffee shops um, because I feel like I can make them how I want them at home and they're not six bucks. But um, yeah, 
the Twin Valley does it right, that's for sure. And when we were in line, I was talking to one of you who you introduced yourself, and then an old man was like asking how far apart my kids are because they practically look like twins. Um, and I was telling him they're 18 months apart and all that. And anyway, we were just friendly chatting while we're waiting for our drinks. And Bonnie's like, did that man know us? I said, no, he was just being friendly. She's like, there's a lot of people like that. And I'm like, well, some of these people know me from YouTube videos that I make. They don't understand, they have no idea. I don't hide it from them, but they don't get it. And I don't know, I try not to let my little hobby of YouTube be invasive in their lives. So it is really fun when I get to see you all, but it's funny how my kids are starting to pick up on like, wow, mommy has a lot of friends, <laughs> which is actually really fun for me. When I was lost and hopeless, when I was at my worst It's grace that you extended That I did not deserve I am so amazed by all you have done I cannot explain the depth of your love Limits can't contain the heart of you, God I'm amazed at the depth of your love Your mercy came and found Second birth. I'm overwhelmed and grateful. You took what I deserve. Okay, I just picked up another shipment of planners. I have a whole bunch here, so hopefully we won't sell out quite as fast as last time. Um, if you did not grab one the first time around, there should still be some available. I'm gonna let my friends over on Fox Shop Fox Bear on Instagram know first because um, they take the time to follow me over there. But this is what they look like. This is the solid one and the floral one, just like a very muted but busy floral. I love that. Um, it's not as saturated. Um, so it's, I don't know. I like when your planner looks cute sitting on your countertop or in your office or whatever. Um, I kind of like when it matches. But the nice thing about these two is that you can flip them back, you know? and you can write on them, whatever. These are actually really affordable, so um, you don't have to feel like you have to treat them with kid gloves or anything because, yeah, they're made to actually use. And I did talk about this before, but they're very simple inside. They're not dated, so you can, if you skip a week, at least I know sometimes for me, it's like, oh, I didn't even plan this week, but next week I want to again, and I don't have to skip a whole week, you know? I can just pick up where I left off. Um, but yeah, I will leave the link for them down below if you are interested. Actually, I have my planner. This is just the spread from last week. I sometimes use stickers. Um, yeah, anyway, every week looks so different. Some weeks I don't use my planner planner quite as heavily. And then some weeks it's just like so scribbled in. Um, and I have spaces for brain dumping and list making that I use very heavily as well. So yeah, check them out. Um, I would not recommend these planners for like crazy planner people because they're a little too simple for you. Um, but I just, I feel like every planner I go out there and try to buy, they're full of like worksheets almost, like mark how much water you did, track your habits, like everything. I don't know, I don't need, I don't wanna work for my planner. I want my planner to work for me, is what I like to say. So yeah, check them out. They're the Any Day Everyday Planner, and the quote on the front is, the big word is every day, and then it says at the top, there's beauty in the every day, and then every day is a fresh start. So it works for me, it's the ideal planner for me. Maybe it is not for you, I don't know, but um, I did have a couple of you buy like eight of them and hand them out as gifts, so I appreciate that. Thank you so much, but Mommy. on to the next stop, which happens to be the park. Are you guys excited? Yeah. Let's go. I'm so amazed by all you have done. I cannot explain the depth of your love. Limits can't contain the heart of you. Woohoo! They're like literally balancing. <laughs> you guys weigh the same. <laughs> I do have twins.
Okay, so it is Sunday afternoon. I'm actually ready to go head out the door to the bridal shower. I'll show you my outfit in just a second. But yeah, we did not go to church this morning. Obviously, Josh made us a big breakfast and I did a little Sunday school lesson with the kids. And we actually sat down and did some planning together. I like to plan on Sundays for my week ahead. And the kids wanted to help too. They each have one of their own little planners because I had some you know, prototypes before I got it just perfect. So they use some of those. The way I like to plan is to just do like a big brain dump and get everything out like that I wanna get done for the week. This week's looking a little bit slow, which is great. We can stay home and recuperate a little bit, but I still have a lot of things on my to-do list. So I just kind of brain dump it all out. And then I look at my calendar, look at the weather, try to make everything mesh up, line up. And I think we might go to the pool, take the kids swimming on Monday night, just the big kids and Josh will stay home with Miller. Just to get him out of the house, we haven't hardly done anything this weekend. You know, just trying to take it easy and everything. But then after that, the cold air is just good for Miller's cold. So we went out to an abandoned, not abandoned, it was deserted, nobody was there, to a deserted park and just played some keep away. And Miller just loved to watch the kids. It gave him like, entertainment and he was happy to be out there in like the cool, yeah, by the way, it was 70 degrees yesterday. Today it's 45. Welcome to Pennsylvania in November. So anyway, hopefully this cold will, weather will like kill off some germs. So that would be great. Um, but yeah, I'm ready to head out the door here. This is the dress I'm wearing. My sister's colors for her wedding are like a rust color. And so I thought this would kind of fit in. I'm wearing leggings because it's so cold out, but it's creating static. Anyway, it's a kind of weird length. It looked funny with boots, so I just switched into these. They're a little dressy, but that's okay. Um, and the long sleeves are not necessarily warm, but I feel like it makes me look uh, more cozy and less like chilly or something, you know? So I like it. I think it fits me well. I can link it below. It is from Amazon and this pattern you've seen before, I'm sure. I'm gonna head over there, make sure everything's set up for the games. And I want to put some balloons out at the end of the driveway, some stuff like that. And my mom wants me to do some more writing on for the menu. Uh, I really enjoy the whole like calligraphy, not calligraphy, because it's not that, but I used to like doodle in high school all the time. So I guess that's where I got good at typography or whatever. So anyway, I need to go over there and write some stuff on the tablecloth or the paper roll for the table. But yeah, I will take you guys along. We'll see what it's like. Hopefully it's a good turnout and I hope that Janine feels special with all the stuff and that it's everything she wanted it to be. And hopefully my game is fun and funny if nothing else. So also today we had a fun mail delivery. I know on a Sunday, right? But it was um, our blinds for our bedroom project and my artwork for the bedroom project. I'm just dying to see it. So I'm going to open it with you all. I have not looked at it yet. So it needs a frame. And it's like a big oversized print that's gonna go above the bed. It's called Morning Mist from Collection Art Prints, maybe, is that what it's called? Wait, is it all white? Oh no, I there can, it is. <gasps> no, oh! No. I, can, I can see what it looks like. It's called Morning Mist. It's very neutral, but oh, look at that. It's like greenish. I like, it's very subtle. Yeah, anyway, that's all the sneak peek you're gonna get because I don't wanna unpackage it the whole way. Our bedroom project has been a long time coming just because furniture lead times are like six to nine months. Um, so yeah, we're planning on having that finalized by January. So I'm so excited. I told Josh, I don't need a Christmas present. That bedroom will be my Christmas present. I'm so excited to finally have a pretty bedroom. We've actually never had a pretty bedroom in our lives. <laughs> our first house, it was just like leftover decor plopped in there, um, very tiny. And now we're living in, a, it looks like from the 1970s yet. So, well, not now, cause it's painted and everything, but yeah, I can't wait to show it to you all. Coming soon.
Okay, so update. The bridal shower was a hit, I would say. The food was definitely the star of the show. Um, they all played the games, even though there was all different ages. Um, we actually played one game where Jan's friend came up with like multiple choice questions. Um, and then you it was like four corners. You stood in whichever corner you thought the correct answer was. And then at the end, you saw who had the most right. And then it was so funny. The tiebreaker she had was, see so you can guess the closest time to when her fiance text her last. <laughs> you know, was it 10 minutes ago, two minutes ago, whatever, it was hilarious, so. And also the painting came the day after uh, the bridal shower, so I showed it to her, like you saw, she loved it, and she's gonna put it in her house. She might even use it as wedding decor at her wedding. We'll see, that's yet to be determined, but yeah, she loved it so much, and again, I chose watercolor. Um, if you're wondering what medium that was, yeah, beautiful piece, and if you'd like to check out Paint Your Life, I will put a link right at the top of the description box, and you'll get 20% off when you use the code down there, so take advantage. It's, it's such a personal and thoughtful gift. But yeah, I thought I would just end this video out with a little update on Miller and emergency rooms and all that type of thing, since I'll probably never talk that about, about that again on here if I can help it. <laughs> um, I would have never told you guys, except I happened to be filming this weekend, and um, yeah, I mean, let's just keep it real, right guys? So Miller has been on the mend. He's been doing better every day. We've had actually some pretty scary nights. Um, just like he gets croupy at night, he gets kind of tight. Um, and this happened with my daughter, Ivani, as well. So you just have to make sure they get some cold air. Um, we run a humidifier in the room and stuff like that. It's just the little where they are, the worse it sounds. And anyway, he's on the mend. He slept so good the last two nights. This is actually Tuesday night now that I'm giving you the update. Um, and yeah, he's acted like his normal self. Like Monday, he turned a corner and he was just like chipper and happy. And you could just tell, you know, behind their eyes, they look like themselves again. Um, but I did say that I'd never been to the emergency room before, which is not actually true. Josh took me to the emergency room one time. Um, Ivani was three months old and I woke up completely paralyzed. I don't know if any of you have ever heard of this. Um, I was totally paralyzed on the one side of my body um, and I couldn't talk right. It was like stroke-like symptoms. I would try to say, tell Josh, I know what I wanna say, but it, it, I can't get it out. I felt like it was like moving underwater. Um, it was very scary. My hand, I couldn't move. Like it was, it was creepy. Um, and so Josh loaded Ivani up in her little car seat with the little car seat cover and he took us into the emergency room and she just slept in her little car seat the whole time. And yeah, they couldn't really figure out what it was. I think they did either like an MRI or a CAT scan or something and they couldn't find anything. They made me take a pregnancy test to make sure I wasn't pregnant, all that stuff. Um, it was really scary and we didn't really have a lot of answers at first. And then it happened again. And the next time I just like kind of waited for it to pass because the first time it like passed as we were driving in the car, um, like everything went back to normal again. It was really, really weird. Like there was no side effects afterwards. So I don't know. But then when the second time it happened, like I said, I just tried to relax and stay calm. It happened in the middle of the night again. Really, really weird. Um, and eventually it eased up again. I was like, is this my new life now? What's going on? It was actually really scary. Um, but it never happened again since, praise God. I don't know if it was like, hormones and stuff, but the doctor tried to say it was some type of migraine, which I never had migraines in my life before, but I don't know, not sure what it was. Like my, even though my head wasn't hurting, I guess that's what they still wanted to call it. Um, but anyway, I'm so thankful that has not been in on my radar ever since. So thank you Lord. But yeah, I had been in the emergency room then. I totally forgot about it. Um, but yeah, not a fun place to be. Um, all you that work there in the emergency rooms, you guys are a different breed. <laughs> thank you for all you do. And yeah, I hope to not have to relive that anytime soon. But anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I appreciate you hanging out with me this weekend, even though maybe the content was a little bit out of the norm. I don't know. This is my life. This is what happened this weekend. And yeah, come back next week for another Vlogmas style video. We'll do a lot of Christmassy things. I'll see you on the next one. Bye, everyone.